Hi, today I want to show you how you can create native browser input pop-ups just like this where you can actually type text in here just like that and on click we're actually going to update a live waste variable just like this. Let me click. Boom! We got that data that was written in the native browser pop-up right now in our WIST variable and we can work with that directly within WIST. This is a super nice thing because this shows that you're not just limited to building the HTML components in Webflow that the user is going to be interacting with. You can actually use WIST to communicate directly with your user's device through the browser and to use the native system preferences. For example, since I'm going to use this on a Mac computer, it will give me the Apple interface, right? If I were using that on a Windows computer, it will give me the Windows interface. This is a nice and native way to update those things just like that. And now we have waste right in the input field. Or you could do this like with names or something like this. And if I re-enter something again, as you can see right here, it will even update the existing variable. So that's just really a great showcase of the reactivity that WIST gives you. So let's get started. So first of all, we need to create a variable and I'm just calling that input. And I'll just set this as the initial state as just an empty string. And now I want to create actually, let's go to Webflow real quick. We just have a button in Webflow, very simple setup. You can trigger this when a request finishes. You can trigger this on page scroll. You can trigger this if a certain breakpoint of the page is in view. You could use all of those things or on hover of a specific element or something like this. But in this, in this example, we're just going to perform this based on a simple button click. Also, so that you know, if you use this on Safari, you may need to trigger this on a button click or if you want to have this programmatically, do a programmatic button click on a trigger element, for example, just because of the way that Safari and Apple devices work um, about consent and their preferences that the user has to interact on the page in order to show those native pop-ups in some cases, depending on which version you're on, just so that you know. But we're just going to ask, add a WIST attribute of WIST input button and we're just going to go, oh, that is actually the wrong project. Uh, <laughs> we're just going to go to WIST in the input button section in here. We're going to add the attribute input button on this field. We're going to add the on event click and we're going to run a function. So first of all, we need to define in our v.input variable the prompt. The prompt is the thing, this thing is called a browser prompt. It is prompting you using the native browser features to add an input. This is called a browser prompt. So we need to have our WIST variable and we're going to define the browser prompt function with following content. As you can see, it says, please enter something. If I were to add, please enter something, and let's say we're not going to do this dynamic, but if I were to do, please enter something Joe, it will say, please enter something Joe. So you could even, let's do FinSuite, just like that. Now we got FinSuite in the variable, wonderful. So you could even customize that using variables, that text as well, to have a customized message to the user if you want to, but we're just going to define this message when we configure the function that is configured within our WIST state variable. And then we want to do if input doesn't equal null and if input isn't an empty string, um, we want to console lock you entered v.input just so that we have that in here as well. So that if we open the console, if we open the developer tools right now, let's go to the console and let's ignore all the errors that are going on here. Let's clear them out and let's just resize this a bit. Uh, just like that. Wonderful. Let's stretch it. Let's see how far we can go. Perfect. And if I now were to run this and I were to enter hello123, 
we will see you entered hello one, two, three. Just ignore that, that's whist. <laughs> um, but we will see that we console lock that as well in case you want to do anything with that. Um, here, right under the console lock, you could work with uh, v.input perfectly um, in running any request or doing any uh, JavaScript manipulation with that if you want to. And then else, it will say no input provided. So if we actually open DevTools again, and we're going to go to the console, just like that, and I'm going to open that pop-up and I do cancel, you will see no input provided. So we will be able to lock those interactions and that is basically all the code we need to do that. And since this browser prompt is already configured in our WIST variable, it will automatically update the variable. So technically, I could even simplify this code and remove the logging and basically would click on here and type in hello and it will update that variable as well. So you can even do the low code version or the no code version basically of it um, without the logging. If you want logging or if you want to do any conditional uh, functions or any conditional manipulations on the input, this would be an optional step to then see if something happens with the input, but it is not needed. If you want to only have a simplified version, this line, this one line is fully enough to capture the browser's, uh, the, not the browser, the user's input and to set it as the WIST state variable right here. And you can update that to one, two, three, four, five, and wonderful, you got that in here. So yeah, now, how, now you know how to create dynamic user input pop-ups that use the native browser components. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your time. Thank you so much for watching those videos and for your wonderful encouragement and your wonderful comments. This really means a lot to me. And thank you so much and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.